The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome to the Mickelon Law Group's webinar series. Today's webinar is how to change custody in one day. Welcome to the webinar on how to change custody in one day. As a New Jersey divorce and family attorney, I will provide valuable insights and guidance to help you navigate the process of changing custody arrangements. For those that haven't worked with me, this is me. My name is Brad Micklin. I'm the lead attorney and managing member of the Micklin Law Group. We are a law firm concentrated in empowering men and fathers with divorce, custody, and family law matters with offices in Nutley, Montclair, and Sonoma, New Jersey. I believe the code there is in case you wanted to get to my online calendar, schedule a consultation, or uh, following up meetings. These are some of the awards I've been honored to receive in the past. Um, I don't put these up to impress people, but to impress upon you the wealth of experience and knowledge that I hope to bring to you, both with this and any other issue that I may be addressing for you. I've also been and continue to be a national legal consultant. I have appeared, as you can see on Fox, Inside Edition, Larry King, May You Rest in Peace, I-24, and many other national broadcast stations. Again, just to show you the experience that I'm bringing to you so that you can understand and trust in the advice I'm giving you both today and in my other materials. So first tip is wait until you have parenting time. Before initiating a custody change, it's crucial to establish a solid foundation with parenting time. It's recommended you maximize this time to gather evidence and vital information that will support your case for a change of custody. I apologize, the presentation that gets produced here sometimes duplicates words. I can't change it, and I don't want to delay getting this information out to you, so please don't think I didn't proofread these issues. I just can't change them in the final document. But when I say wait until you have parenting time, I mean when you physically have the child for which you are concerned. Whether there's a court order for the schedule or it just happens to be your time will be the best time to follow these steps. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily to wait until you have the child to then plan the rest of the items I'm gonna discuss in this webinar. But as far as when you wanna move forward, You'll see in a few moments why you want to wait until you physically have custody of your child. Or actually of anybody's child. I mean, it may be a, a grandparent, right? Um, step parent, not limited to just a physical, natural parent. Next is you want to draft an emergent application. Step by step, I'll guide you through the process of creating an emergent application for custody change. I'll briefly describe how to craft a compelling application that includes the necessary components and clear reasons for the change, supporting evidence, and compliance with legal requirements. Now, there's a case that you're going to need to rely on. You can find it on the internet. It's called Crow versus Degoya, C R O W E, a little case V, Degoya D, as in David Edward, G I O A I. The citation is New Jersey. Supreme Court Reporter, Volume 90, page 126 in 1982. The way you type that is 90 space NJ space 126 parenthetical 1982. That is the lead case that empowers and explains what a New Jersey court needs to find to grant an emergent application. There are four main factors to Crow versus Dodoya that you need to address. The first is that there is irreparable harm. The application, which I'm assuming is implicit inside of this, I'm not here to tell you just how to take custody of a child, but when there's a concern over the other parent's ability or fitness or some emergent harm to the child could be the only reason that you'd be seeking to change custody with the advice in this application if that wasn't clear. So first, you need to explain irreparable harm to the child, not to you, not to some other person, not to the other natural parent but only to the child. It's gotta be immediate and irreparable. So for instance, if you believe the other parent is using drugs, neglecting the child, 
bringing unsafe individuals to the child, practicing anything that could possibly endanger the child's health or welfare will be sufficient for an irreparable harm. Second is you need to show that you have an underlying claim that is settled, meaning that you have a legal right to custody. If you're the parent, that's pretty well settled. If you're a grandparent or a step parent, it's not so well settled. So you would need to address this point specifically so that you have what's called standing or the right to be heard on this application. Third, you have to claim that there's a strong likelihood that you will be successful on the final application. That you will just summarize by repeating that if there's irreparable harm to a child, as long as that is established and you believe in good faith that it will be, you can claim you will likely be successful because it's unlikely a court would rule against the person in a situation where there could be potentially harm to a child. And the last or fourth prong of the Crow test is that the relative hardship to the parties is not significant, meaning the harm to the other parent is not as great as maybe the harm to the child or possibly you and your relationship to the child, if there's an alienation claim or something like that. But when you're balancing everybody involved, the other person is not being harmed in such a way that should prevent the court from considering your application. File on a Thursday afternoon. Discover the strategic advantage of filing your emergent application on a Thursday afternoon. In a moment, I'll give you valuable insights into the rationale behind it, this timing and how it can expedite the custody change process, ensuring a swift resolution. Once again, I do apologize for the, the typos. I do not want, again, you to think that I'm not proofreading this. It's just a quirk in the programming I can't fix. Follow the Thursday afternoon, and I want to be clear this entire application is not suggesting you do anything inappropriate, unethical, that you fabricate or exaggerate anything. The, the premise of the advice is that you have a child, you have a true legal concern for the child's safety, and you want the court to change custody, at least temporarily, to help the child. So when you've taken the emergent application, which by the way, if you're not doing this with an attorney, which I don't recommend, but if you don't have an attorney, you can usually find the forms that you would need to file on the New Jersey Judiciary website. Go to a web browser, just type that New Jersey Judiciary website and search around the forms sites. If you have a custody order, you will file a motion for modification, and there's a form for that. <coughs> Excuse me. If you do not have custody order, you can file what's called an FD, which is Frank and David, which stands for Family Non-Dissolution Claim. If you are not married, you can file a claim for custody or parenting time. Matter of fact, even if you are married, you can file the FD claim because you're not filing for a divorce. <clears throat> and when you complete the either FD application or the motion for modification, you want to also attach a written explanation of the four factors that I indicated before. You want to file them on a Thursday afternoon. <clears throat> and currently, New Jersey has electronic filing that was implemented in the family courts around the COVID pandemic time. And I believe that you might still be able to go into court physically and file the papers, but it's preferred that, that you do it electronically. You can call the family court non-dissolution office if you uh, don't have a court order and ask for some guidance of how to file it. You can ask who gets addressed to. You can also get the judge's law clerk so you can email a copy of the application when you are ready to file it. Be the same process if you have a custody order and you're filing a motion to modify. And the reason you want to file on a Thursday afternoon is tactical, admit it. It's not anything that legal, it's not gonna change the harm, but it's tactical because the judges right now are required to review emergent applications on an emergent basis, meaning usually the day they get it or as quickly as they possibly can get to it. And if you have a true concern and your papers are prepared in a thorough way that does suggest and document a potential harm to a child, more often than not, 
courts are going to act swiftly and grant some what's called interim relief, which means temporary. They will not necessarily give you a, an order that changes custody permanently, nor are they likely to give you a scheduled trial to be heard on the issue. But if a judge believes that there's a, a potential risk of harm to a child, even if it's not that clear, in my opinion, experience, judges err on the side of caution. They will usually grant the application. Now, turning back to why I say Thursday afternoon, obviously Thursday afternoon, three, four o'clock, the courts are wrapping up. They have um, a lot to do in a little bit of time. If they get to it, they, it's either at the end of their day or they will get to it Friday morning. And Fridays, first of all, are busy days. They're often most of the days, courts are overwhelmed. But they also are not likely to give you a hearing. So the interim relief is likely to be granted because they're running out of time before the weekend rolls around and they need to address the application. They might grant you a relief since you have the child, it's expedited and easy. And then you have at least three, four days where the child's going to be in your possession, your custody. Um, it makes the argument more, more compelling when you're arguing things like risk of harm, or the hardship balancing. If the child's already there, there is no harm. You can argue consistency for the child's benefit because he or she is with you currently. There won't be any ping pong and it eliminates risk of harm. But again, Thursday is more of a timing issue because the courts have less time before a weekend to consider it. And when pressed for a decision, I believe they will err on the side of caution to protect the child and grant you a temporary order of changing custody. The importance of professional legal advice. Throughout the webinar, I've emphasized the significance of seeking professional legal advice before taking any legal action. So with an attorney, ensures you that you have the right guidance and expertise to navigate the complexities of New Jersey divorce and family law. I do not say this because I am an attorney. <clears throat> when I have a legal need, I hire an attorney. I believe that these matters are incredibly difficult to handle on your own. Family law matters, divorce matters, custody matters are very sensitive, very intimate. It's not a money judgment issue. It's not a tenancy landlord issue. More often than not, you want to have somebody who's independent to guide you and advise you because of the emotions and difficulty of handling on your own, <laughs> especially given the advice here where I'm telling you to quickly rush on an emergent basis with some tactical planning to usurp custody of a child. It's a, it's a big step, and I don't want to suggest I'm trying to recommend you do it in any way inappropriate, and a lawyer can help you determine and navigate these words to make sure that you're doing it appropriately for all parties involved. Custody change, a path to a better future. Positive impact on your child. As a result of this application, there's no assuming it's successful. You'll have an effective custody change, can have a profound positive impact on your child's well being, ensure a healthier and happier future, especially if, under the guise of this application, you believe there's a risk of harm and you will remove the child from them. Ensure legal compliance, learn how to navigate the system to ensure your custody change aligns with the necessary requirements. And regulations in New Jersey, which I tried in the earlier stages to explain to you. And lastly, empower your case with the right legal support and guidance. You can strengthen your case for a change of custody and increase your chance of success. Yes, it is a picture of me, um, different from the one earlier. Not that I'm saying you got to hire me, certainly available to consult, but speak to or hire someone. Changing custody, a step towards a better future. One will hopefully improve your parent-child relationship. By changing the arrangements, you can nurture a healthier, more fulfilling parent-child relationship. While the parent that you're filing the application against may be upset or angry or hurt from the nature of your claim, but hopefully you can show the merits of the application and help everybody involved. Two, it will enhance stability and support change of custody can offer great stability and support for your child, creating a nurtured environment for growth and development. And lastly, it's opportunity for personal growth. Barking on a change of custody allows for personal growth and a chance to change and provide the best possible future for your child. And ultimately, that's what everybody involved here should be focusing on. I often reiterate that this isn't about you or the other parent, good or bad. May, maybe about fitness, but not necessarily the focus. The focus is what is best for your child. 
If you like this video, please give a like and share it. You can search for me on YouTube by searching Brad Michael Micklin. That's M-I-C-K-L-I-N. Uh, like and share this video if you think it's going to help anybody. And then on the bottom is also the, the site to my YouTube page so you can see other videos that may be helpful on this and other topics. Please like and share those so other people get to see those videos also. If you need legal assistance with a family law matter in New Jersey, you can contact me, Brad Micklin Esquire, and the Micklin Law Group. Our website is micklinlawgroup.com. That's M-I-C-K-L-I-N-L-A-W-G-R-O-U-P.com. You can also reach us at 973-562-0100, as well as the YouTube page that I mentioned in the slide beforehand. Now, the exciting part, I'm not going to read this slide. It's the disclaimer for legal information. It basically says that you cannot rely on this as legal advice, which I know is sort of ironic, but that is the case. Because we don't have an attorney-client relationship, because this is generic information not based on your specific facts of your case that you can't apply to. It, it is simply advertising materials. I hope the information helped you and I wish you all good luck.